start recording. Welcome, Welcome to Apocalypse Otaku. I am your host, Char, Otaku. along with my co-host here. Otaku girl. What's up, everybody? You know, we did run late again, but, you know, that's how it is. It's computers. Yeah, computers and all that junk. So. Twitch takes a long time to set up. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. When you, when our studio switches our stuff around on us, oh, yeah. It can be, you know, tricky. Very, very lovely. Yeah. Very lovely indeed. Sometimes not so much. <laughs> mm. Anyway, what did you do over the weekend? Watch or during the week? <laughs> Worked and watch anime, basically. So, yeah, that's kind of my weekend. I did the same exact thing. That's scary. Well, what I <laughs> worked and I watched anime. Funny. <laughs> oh, and another thing while we were on our way up here, we passed, I think it was either a Hyundai or a Toyota. No, they passed us. Yeah, they passed us. Um, it was either a Honda, I think it was a Hyundai or a Toyota that had a Soul Eater sticker on the bottom bumper of their car. So if you're watching us... We salute you. Yes, we do. We enjoy your anime selection choices, especially Soul Eater, because that is awesome. Yes. That was a great show. Mm hmm Still is. Anyway, we're going to get on with it. Yes. We are down to our final two. Yes, the final two the of our One Piece versus Naruto Battle Royale. And man, this this last poll that I conducted uh, was. Whew. I bet it was lit. It was. It was very very lit indeed. So why don't we go ahead and get on with it? We have our favorite knuckleheaded ninja Naruto Uzumaki. That who did he defeat? He defeated Itachi, um, and Shanks defeated Luffy. With 54, and that that was pretty, pretty impressive. Um, here, let's go back and look at the numbers while we go back here. So those were the numbers for our Naruto versus One Piece side when we were down to our final four. It was Itachi with 50% and Naruto with 50%. Now, that one was very close, but I had to be the tiebreaker for that, so I had to go with my boy Naruto. Then with the Shanks and Luffy match, Luffy had 40% while, while uh, Shanks had 59 Well, wait, hold up, you goofed. Turns out Luffy's supposed to be going up against Naruto, not Shanks. No, uh -huh. Yeah. No, uh -huh. Wait, hold up, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hold up a minute. <laughs> Huh, okay, hold what up. What school did you go to? I don't know. My brain my brain doesn't work some days. <laughs> I worked yesterday. My brain doesn't want to work. I'm sorry. Yeah, because if everybody... 50 is greater than 40. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just have something that says Baka on me. Because seriously, that's how dumb I am. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Oh my oh goodness. Man. Okay. Okay. We we established that 50 is greater than 40. We get it. But <laughs> either way, either way, um, we got it right. We got it right. We got it right. It was my fault, not not the other way around. <laughs> it was my fault, not Char's. But either way, we are going to get down to our last two, Shanks. Versus Naruto Uzumaki. Oh, man, this poll was, I wouldn't say intense, but it was pretty, pretty good. There were only, you know, the weird thing is it had 13 likes and two comments on it only. But, the, num but the numbers spoke for themselves in this situation. J j just hear me out. Just hear me out with this one. So, uh -huh. okay, so... All right, so we're going to read the comments first for this particular particular poll um, that we conducted. So, Pirate Hunter Zoro. Man, he's been commenting on all of these polls. <laughs> Jeez. Who are you, Pirate Hunter Zoro? 
<laughs> he's obviously a pirate fan. Yeah, he's clearly a fan of One Piece pertains to his name. So he said, if Shanks hadn't saved my boy Luffy, One Piece wouldn't have been the same. Now, I have seen the show, and it is true. Luffy was young, and he ate the the gum gum fruit. And turns out a devil fruit's powers... Um, if you eat a devil fruit, you can't swim. Like, you think, like, you know, everybody learns how to swim. But when you eat a devil fruit, you lose that ability to swim. So, oh, that, well, that stinks. Yeah, that does stink. All that power, and yet you can't swim. <laughs> That's crazy. I know how to swim, but if I lose that ability to swim, then, yeah, I, I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to eat the devil fruit. Mm-hmm. Well, it's either immensable power or losing your ability to swim. It's like losing a power. True. True. Everyone's got to learn to swim. So that's what Zoro, uh, Pirate Hunter Zoro if put. You think about it. If you're in a boat and you're going over the seas, what's going to be your kryptonite? Water. Water. <laughs> oh, God. Superman, eat your heart out. <laughs> Okay, and then Jasmine, Japanese beautiful tiger. Yes, that's in parentheses with this person's uh, fancy, fancy name. Um, Basically, what she put was like a girl, like an anime um, schoolgirl smiling. So apparently she just enjoyed the poll either way. Oh, okay. Well, we thank you for that. So... Because it said, please upgrade to the latest version to see the comment. But the thing is, I'm going to have to look at it on my um, bigger Anemo app in order to look at it. So, but either way, that's how it is. Because I have individual apps of all the apps that I can explore on Anemo. So, that's what I have. So, 53 votes in total were cast for this nail-biting poll. 53. 53 votes. So, in other words... You're not going to have to make a tiebreaker. Nope. <laughs> because she, she's basically referring to the time that um, Naruto and Itachi were tied at 50 apiece. <laughs> and that, that I had to do the tiebreaking because I've seen both of them fight before. So I was the tiebreaker in the situation. So either way, we are going to get on with it. So let's get it on. All right. Don't bring Barry Manilow into this. That's not Barry Manilow. What the <laughs> heck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> he did not sing that song. I know it was Marvin Gaye. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh man. Oh. Okay. You are right. just getting everything wrong I, today. It's, it's Thursday. <laughs> I have the right to Thur- be wrong. <laughs> Thursday got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let, let's go ahead and get with it. Okay. Shanks, 18.9%. Oh. Okay. Get this. Naruto, 91.1, no, 81, sorry, 81.1% of the votes. So clearly our victor is our favorite knuckleheaded ninja from the Hitting Leaf Village and the 7th Hokage, Naruto Uzumaki. Woo! <laughs> So, Sorry, I I didn't watch the show, so <laughs> I, I I have no opinion. Yeah, <laughs> but okay, with the two contenders, despite not watching like either show, who did you really want to come out on top? Um, you have a pirate and a ninja. <laughs> I think it would depend on the. Uh, Um, the situations that they were in, mm-hmm. you know, like were they fighting on land? Were they fighting, you know, on a boat? A boat, <laughs> or you know, a com- you know, a combination of both. both. So they be on the water on a boat. I think 
if if they were on a boat, Shanks would have you know the upper hand because mm -hmm. because you know he's more adaptable to hand to hand you know combat on a boat. But you think that you know hand to hand combat that he would um he would uh, be able to come out on top, but Naruto being the ninja that he is. He can walk on water. He's not God. He's just a ninja. <laughs> he can walk on water. Yeah. Um, technically, the ninjas can master enough chakra in their feet to stay above water. So, okay. yes, they can walk on water. <laughs> but they're not God. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what is our tsunami schedule for today? For basically Saturday. Well, for those of you who watch tsunami, and I know you're out there, uh, this Saturday, June 29th. Uh, let's take a look. It looks like it still really has not changed. Uh, so, we're going to start at 8 o'clock, because that's when it starts. Yep. 8 o'clock is Dragon Ball Z Kai. Eh. And 8.30 is Dragon Ball Super. Eh. 9 o'clock is Rick and Morty. Oh, wait a minute. There is a change. Two hours of Family Guy. Not two hours. An hour of Family Guy from <laughs> 9.30 to 10.30. And at 10.30 is every, everyone's favorite hero. My Hero Academia. So pumped for season four. Like, you can't believe. We don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Because I watch what's on Toonami. Um, and then at 11 o'clock is another show of Dragon Ball Super. Boo. And 11.30 is Attack on Titan. Uh. And then at midnight is The Promised Neverland. Never show this to children. Ever. It's, uh, I, I, I saw the description of it and I, I didn't even want to watch it. Because it's, it seems like it's too depressing. Anyway. Mm -hmm. At 12.30 is Sword Art Online Alicization. And I think this one might be the last uh, episode of this series. Oh... I think I saw a spoiler about Not that. of the entire series, but just, of that, the, just this season. That season, yeah. And it, this one's really good. Um, I do recommend watching it for those who have not watched it, because it is very, very good. I mean, at first, it's kind of slow, like any other anime, mm -hmm. but... It does pick up. I mean, really does pick up. Especially when it gets really to the middle and to the end. And it's so funny how Sword on Online, like when they first, when it first premiered, everyone was bashing on it, saying like, "Oh man, this anime sucks. Kirito's a lousy protagonist. The story's all played out and all that." Like. A lot of people bash Sword Art Online, especially for the first season and also the second season. But this one is kind of bringing it the back up again. The first two seasons, the first season I thought was great. Yeah, I thought the it was good too. Second season was okay. Okay. Third season, I didn't even watch it because I was told 
and when I read it, read the synopsis, mm -hmm. it was just not worth your time. Hmm. And I read it, I read the synopsis, and I was like, yeah, it is so not worth my time. But you started watching it and, and, and just... I, this is the fourth season. Really? Technically, that's the fourth season. Gun Gale was the third. Oh, uh, wait. Okay, now I remember now. Okay. Because they had that Elfheim Online arc as well within the first season, so it makes sense. I thought that was the second season. Wait, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because on Toonami, they go by seasons, and Elfheim was the second season. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing they did with Bleach. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> watch out. Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online. Alicization. It's worth your time. One a.m. <laughs> <laughs> One a.m. is Lupin the Third, Part Five, and I'm thinking that. This is going. I'm thinking that this is the last Lupin L series that we're, we're gonna see. <gasps> no. Well, it's because the guy that made Lupin he's Died. passed away. Yeah. yeah. So he kicked the bucket first. It might be the last one that you'll ever see. I don't watch it, but you might want to. Mm -hmm. Uh, at one thirty is Black Clover. Everybody loves that show. I don't I watch do. it. <laughs> I don't watch it. The ones that I watch is My Hero Academia, uh, and right now Sword Art Online, Alicization, and that's it. Um, and at two o'clock is. Boruto, Naruto, Next Generations, uh, Naruto, Shippuden, <laughs> and at 3 a.m. is Hunter, Hunter. Oh, boy. Don't bother staying up till 3.30 in the morning <laughs> unless you are really, really up and... Really bored. Yeah. Because uh, the 3.30 is Jemuseru Machu Picchu. Uh, is probably one of the most ridiculous anime plots ever. I'm talking like brain-numbing idiocy with this one. And then at 4 a.m., it's Barry's favorite show. Bowmasters! Masters! 9009. <laughs> I wonder if he actually watches that. <laughs> if he stays up till 4 I don't think he, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. We'll have to um, conversate with him later on in the day <laughs> and ask if he does. I really doubt that he does. Well, he probably does. He just won't admit to it. He just said, I, I think all he says is that, you know, that's the kind of show that I would really want to watch. Because that's real entertainment. That's creepy entertainment. Yeah, it is creepy entertainment. <laughs> but again, Barry is a weird dude. <laughs> Somewhat. He can be professional and weird when he wants to. <laughs> He's odd. <laughs> More odd than me. And then at 4.15 a.m. is another show that you do not want to watch is Tigtown. Yeah, don't bother with that one. Don't even touch it. Tigtown. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But then at 4.30... We have the Venture Brothers. I mean, this is how bad the, those three shows are. When Aqua Teen Hunger Force makes more sense than they do, don't bother. 
Dusty Gonzalez? <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Don't say it. <laughs> it's not what you think. Oh my god. Look at the word. Uh um, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay, and then at 5.30, we have... Home Movies! Because Aqua Teen Hunger Force is on for a half hour. Yep. Wait a minute, no? Yeah. Yeah, half hour. Half hour. So now, we're going to switch gears, and we are going to go over to Otaku Girl for... The manga readings. Yay. Otherwise known as pure torture. Oh, it is not pure torture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for you it is if you don't know how to pronounce the names. True fact, but I do. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So we have, I, yeah, I repeated these last week, but I'm going to do it again because it's fun. So let's see. On the fun, fun, fun. Yep. So on the twenty fourth, there was only one DVD Blu-ray release that was in the UK on Monday the twenty fourth. Says Grimoire of Zero Collection. So for all you UK fans out there that actually went to go get this supposed collection, happy to you. Then on Tuesday the twenty fifth. There were a lot of manga releases in the U.S. as well as yesterday on the 26th. So, let's get on to the Tuesday. So, Afira Tara from Commonplace to the World's Strongest, Volume 4. Card Capture Sakura's Collection 1. Didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? Volume 6. Dragon Goes House Hunting, Volume 3. Fire Force 16. And that will be an anime soon produced by Funimation with the same art style as Soul Reaper. I'm so looking forward to that. I think it was, it was called Fire Force or Fire... Nope. Nope. It was called Fire Force. That's what it's called. I'm pretty sure that's the right title for it. If not, then I'm going to hate myself later on in the day. Okay. Hour of Hour of the Zombie Volume 9. Princess Jellyfish Complete Manga Box Set. Sailor Moon Eternal Edition 5. Sakatoko and Nada Volume 2. The Ancient Magus Bride Supplement 11. Ancient Magus Bride is actually really good. I still need to watch it. I haven't got a chance to. <laughs> I'm ashamed as an anime nerd! You should be. Because <laughs> Todd Habercorn is in it. Well, Todd Habercorn's in an anime I'm watching called The Big Windup. It's about a bunch of guys on a baseball team. And he plays a kid named Tajima. That's nice. Yep. So at least I'm watching... Well, technically I'm watching at least three animes with Todd Habercorn in it. I'll be watching The Ancient Magic's Bride... I'm watching The Big Wind-Up and Fairy Tale. So, yep. God, what other one was he a part of that I was watching? I can't remember now. I don't want to strain my brain anymore. <laughs> okay, where did I leave off? Age Man's Friday to Supplement 2. The Ideal Sponger Life, Volume 2. To The Abandoned Scared Beast, Volume 8. Ultra Tai Ju... Humanization Project Volume 3 and Witch Hat Altier 2. Those your, were your U.S. manga releases on Tuesday the 25th. Now, for yesterday, there were only two manga releases that were released in the U.S. And they were Berserk Deluxe Volume 2 HC. That's for you, Barry. Yep. And... Mob Psycho 100, Volume 3. That'd be for you. Uh, I've already seen all of it. It's actually a good show. Well, it's a manga, not, not DVD. I saw the show. Oh, good for you. 
<laughs> <laughs> but either way, that is all of your manga releases for the last, almost second to last week of June, and then we'll be moving on to the July portion. Oh my! I know, crazy, isn't it? Any it plans is. for the fourth? Any plans for the fourth of July? No, yes, no, maybe so. Got any plans for the fourth shower or no? Probably not. No? Well, well, no. No, no. Does anybody work on the 4th? I think I might. Uh, I don't know. It depends on what day the 4th of July falls on. The 4th of July falls on a Wednesday. I probably don't have to work. I might have to, but I don't know. But either way, what do you got over there? Well, according to Thrillist, Thrillist website... I'm gonna tell you their their version of the best and don't show it. I'm not. Um, I'm just gonna pull it up for myself. <laughs> the best anime that has come out in 2019 so far. Cool. So far. Um, Mob Psycho 102. Um, and then we go on. Oh, my, what the world is this? Why does this look like a knockoff of Yuri on Ice? Good lord. Okay, I'm gonna read the description for this. It's called Seria Zaname. Okay. Let's cut straight to the point. Sarah, That's what it's like, oh my, what is this? <laughs> this was released on April 6th of this year. So I'm going to read it. It says, let's cut right, let's, let's cut straight to the point. Yes, so, let's. <laughs> Zara Namazame is one of, if not the most bizarre, <laughs> idiosyncratic, <laughs> idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic, <laughs> visually, of audacious audacious and thematic thematically thematically evocative evocative anime to air in 2019 you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> okay describing just exactly what the he double hockey sticks <laughs> sananazagame is to someone who has never seen an Anime directed by Kina Hikano. Kuna Hiko. Kuna Hiko. Ikuhara. Looks like a revelation girl. Utena. Yeah. Peng Drum. Yukimara. Revolutionary girl is an old one. Mm. I think I've, I've heard of Penguin Drum. I've heard of that one. That one's. I don't know. Um, Yukimara. Ashira is about as difficult as it would be to describe the concept of water and what the H E double hockey sticks it means for someone to get wet. To be wet. <laughs> to, <laughs> to be to an alien. Wet. <laughs> that this, this is in there. <laughs> to an <laughs> alien. <laughs> but put simply, the show follows three middle schoolers. Kazuyuki Yakisa, Kuji To, and Boy. Toy, and Ita, <laughs> and Ita in Gina, Gina. Enta. Enta. Ginita? Is that? Uh, I don't know. Ginai. Ginai. As they are trans. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. Th yeah. Th this is. This is the anime I did watch about um, where they got turned into kappas and, and uh, amphibious beat face demons. Yeah, yeah, that one? Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> I was about to say, what is that? I'm going, oh, wait, now I know. Now I know. I remember I showed you this not too long ago. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that's understandable that why they would explain that. And this is by Crunchyroll. 
And it's the three are tasked with exercising Kappa zombies, malicious poltergeists, by performing elaborate dance numbers in a liminal dimension to z to steal the zombies. Shiriko Dama. Shiriko Dama. <laughs> a magical sphere. Magical spheres. Representing Rep human desires by forcibly removing them from their butts. Because <laughs> I can't say the other word on air. <laughs> they're... They're booties. <laughs> they're the buttocks. <laughs> the dairy air, That you will. is <laughs> the tamest, most perfunctual... Po yeah. Perfunctory description, description of, of what? what the show is about. In other words, if, if you want to know what the show's about, you got to have to watch it for yourself. Go on Crunchyroll, or if you have a subscription to Funimation, just watch it for yourself, because I've seen one Ooh. episode, and I never touched it again. I don't know why, but that's number uh, two. Okay, number three is The Promised Neverland. Which came out January 11th of this year. So, brace yourselves for very, very weird description that is provided, which is it's actually available on Crunchyroll and Hulu? Hulu has this? What? Apparently. Okay. All right. And number four is... Dororo... Ro Dororo... Dororo... Which is available on Amazon Prime for all you Amazon Prime users. And then... Number five. Five is Agretzico. Oh, yeah, they just had their second season. I'm still on the first season, and I'm mad I never... But this is season two, so... Yeah, but I'm, I'm currently watching the first season. I just haven't got around to the second one. But anyway. And... Number six is Rilakkuma and Kaoru. Oh, yeah, it's about the famous little Japanese bear and his friends. And then Boogie Pop and Others at number seven. Oh, yeah, it's about a girl detective that uh, basically tries to find out why some of her classmates are being possessed. Just don't watch it. Well, I don't watch it. <laughs> And then at number eight is her favorite show right now. Fruits Baskets! There you go. All about time. It's number eight. And this sucker premiered back in April 6th. And everyone was so pumped for it. I know I was. I was very pumped for it. And then at number nine is Kaguya-sama. Love is war. Isn't that true? Love is war? It is. Love is war. Love, I always heard love is a battlefield. Well, it can be both. <laughs> Man, I don't know. And, oh my gosh. Number 10, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Kimetsu no Yaiba. No yaiba yeah, Yaiba. Yaiba. Yeah, Yaiba. <laughs> yaiba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is also available on... Funimation too. I don't know why they didn't put it on here for. Um, and then coming in at number eleven is Mix. It's a series story. Yep, about step brothers who enjoy baseball. I'm guessing she's seen it. I have. Uh, and at number twelve, Midnight Occult Civil Servants. I want to see this. Put it on. It's on Crunchyroll. I don't want it there. I want it on <laughs> I want it on Blu-ray. Well, you have to wait until they get it on a DVD first. It's still going, I think. And then, then 13, 13, we have One Punch Man Season 2. Which is available on Viz and Hulu. For right now, until it's available on Toonami. Yep. Well, technically, you went backwards, so it goes from 13 to 1. Well, I started at number 1. Okay, so basically, um, Mob Psycho 102 was the best, and then... No. Wait, no, it goes 13, yeah. Number 13. 
Where is your brain at today? Not here. <laughs> I think I left it in France and Poland since they're having weird weather. <laughs> That's probably where oh I left it. Oh, my. <clears throat> okay, so besides the animes that you have named, mm -hmm. is there any other anime that you have watched? Any other anime I have watched besides the ones I named earlier? Yes. Um. Hmm. Come on. Like as of now, or like later on in the weeks that I have been off air, like this past week. Okay, this past week. Yes. I did watch Sounds of Life, Fruits Baskets. Um. I did start watching One Punch Man not too long ago. Not the second season, but the first one. Um, but other than that, oh, also still currently watching Fairy Tale. So, other than that, that's pretty much all the anime that I've probably watched this past week. Oh, uh, like I said, I'm watching My Hero Academia and uh, Sword Art Online Alicization. And in addition to that, I've been watching watching D N Angel, which I finished that up, and I started watching again. Yormengon. Now, the reason why I'm rewatching that is because it's going to be part of our battle royale next yep. week. Our next. Battle Royale. Our next Battle Royale is going to be Jormungand against... Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon. So expect a lot of swords, guns, and blood. I don't think they use a lot of swords. I think they use a lot of knives, but they don't use swords. Technically... There's one character in Black Lagoon that did use a sword. One character. And... Yes, he was really good with it. Mm. But, yeah, that was it. Mm -hmm. But again, that is, those will be our next two animes going head to head. So. And that is what's coming next week. Yep, we just got to get our contenders together. That's right. All right, so i'm guessing you all want to know what's coming out on dvd heck yes we do let's see let me get to where we are supposed to be okay uh Alright. Oh, there are a lot of DVD releases for... That was Monday. Alright, so... June 25th. These are all the, uh... Blue I, I see two of them that Barry would like, or... Can I show them up? Because no. Why not? <laughs> Because it's a website. Okay. And for those of you who want to order from this website that I'm reading off of, you can go to Robert's Anime Corner store and you can order from there or you can go to uh, The Right Stuff. Uh, not only does the right stuff have anime, but they also carry manga. Uh, they carry wall scrolls, lots of little anime trinkets that you can get through the right stuff. All right. So, on June 25th, Cyborg 009, the Cyborg Soldier on Blu-ray. These are all strictly blu-ray some of them are dvd dvd and blu-ray mm -hmm. 
he is my master complete collection. Okay. Canna Mimo complete collection. Master of Ragnarok and Blesser of Einarhar. Sounds like something from, you know, the Marvel Universe regarding Thor. I, I think so. that, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. I was like, Ragnarok. Rock and then the hammer. <laughs> I think that was the name of the hammer. That's a complete series, if you want to check that out. I might have to get it now. Um, uh, Box is limited. There's a limited edition Blu-ray and then a regular Blu-ray. And Monogatari series, second season, complete box set. And then this is the one that's for Barry out there. Overlord 3, season 3, DVD and Blu-ray combo pack set. There's a standard edition and a limited edition. I'm betting he's going to get the limited edition. Or both. Uh. <laughs> Selector Infected Wix Wix sauce. <laughs> Wix sauce. Complete series Blu ray. And it's in parentheses, it says essentials. And it says it for the um, Selector Spread Wix sauce season two Blu ray, which is essentials. The Wonderful World of Oz Blu ray, subtitled only. Since when yeah. did they make The Wizard of Oz an anime? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God, I uh, want to get it. But I don't want to read. Yawamushi Petal, Petal Season 1 Collection Blu-ray. And that's it for June 25th. We'll move on to July 2nd. I want to read them. <laughs> Now, the last one for the 25th, which was basically two days ago. Um, basically, that's a bike anime. That is now, yeah. Because it said pedal, something like, okay. It revolves something could, around a professional bicyclist. It could be flowers. No. It would be with a T then. But I don't know. That, that, that's just my guess. It could be around bikes. It could be flowers. We don't know because we don't even know the series, to be honest. I think I see a show here that I need to get. What, for the second? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll read it through to see um, which one of these you need. Okay, so we have Basiliska. Ba Basilisk. Basilisk. The Ook. Uh, yep, I need to get it. Ninja Scrolls Part 2 Blu-ray and DVD combo set, as well as the Basilisk Complete Series. Basilisk. Basilisk. No, Basilisk. Bas <laughs> Basco Basilisk. It's just like you correcting me with Naruto and Boruto. I know. <laughs> Basilisk. Basilisk. There, there you go. I know, I got it. <laughs> okay, so those two will be released on July 2nd. Then Black Clover Season 1 Part 5 Blu-ray and DVD combo set, which one of them includes an art book. Wow. Ooh, I want to get it. <laughs> Next. I wonder what the combo set for Basilisk includes. You'll have to buy Oh it. no, it's DVD and Blu-ray. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, it's a DVD and Blu-ray combo set for that first one. Damn. Yeah. Oop. Oh. Oh. Die. <laughs> Die. Oh man. Oh, oh no. Okay. Oh well. It, it's already out there. We can't do anything about it. I wish we had a sensor button in here. That'd be better. Like, oh peep. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't. Okay, next is Car Captor Sakura Clear Card. We're supposed to be our censor. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you didn't censor yourself at time. <laughs> I know. I know. 
Okay, Car Captor Sakura Clear Card Part 2 Blu ray will be released on the second as well. Then Dragon Ball Super Part 8 DVD episodes 92 through 104, as well as the Blu ray with the same episodes being released. So Dragon Ball Super Part 8 will be released on both DVD and Blu ray on the second. Then. Is this a zombie plus is this a zombie of the dead seasons one and two on Blu-ray? I still have to watch the second season of this is this a zombie of the dead. I haven't got around to watch it yet. Next is JoJo's Bizarre Adventures Season 4 Limited Edition Blu-ray. Ooh. I think, if I remember right, I think that was the season before... Is it? Um... I believe it is. So, it's the season before... Um... Diamond is Unbreakable. Um, God, I can't remember the name of it. Why didn't they not put it on there? Show me the picture. Look at that very, like, ballet-like pose. <laughs> is that... <laughs> <laughs> no, oh that, no, gosh. that's. I think that's either Jonathan or, or like. No, that's not Jonathan. Oh, no, that's Joseph Joestar. Man, look at how graceful he looks. Yeah, he looks so graceful. <laughs> He's like a buff ballet dancer. <laughs> oh my. Oh man, I can't. Okay. Next. Back to what yeah, we were back doing. Back to what we were doing, despite the very. Uh, Ballet like uh, Jojo. <laughs> I believe it was Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin Chronicle of Luum Battlefield Collection Blu ray. Yes. Yep, that's for you. <laughs> okay. Okay, calls in. I think that's a Blu ray and DVD. Um, combo set. Combo set, yeah. I don't know why they put BD. I don't get that. <laughs> but whatever. Um, Blu-ray disc? Blue yeah. Okay. Ruby Volume 6 Blu-ray will be released on the second. Still have to get back into that. <clears throat> it's so sad. Okay. Steins Gate Zero Part 1 will be released on two DVD, Blu-ray, and combo sets. One is a limited edition, and the other one is standard. And then the next one after that is Steins Gate Zero Part 2, which is also a DVD and Blu-ray combo set. Nothing special. Only they there. didn't uh, give you a limited edition on there. No, it didn't give you, well, for the first one, for the part, for the first part, it's a limited edition and a standard, but the second one is not special. <laughs> it doesn't get anything. <laughs> In it's parentheses not after that, no. There's nothing special about it. No. Okay. Those who hunted elves. Complete. Not hunted. Those who hunt elves. Those who hunt elves complete. Uh, that's another old one. Blu-ray. Wow, that's old. <laughs> Those who hunt elves. Man. It, it, it's an old one. I think it was originally put out by, I think, a ADV. I think. Let's see. It's a fantasy action and comedy. Rating is 16 and up. So I'm going to kind of read it. It said, warning, naked elves ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read the description of this. So, elves of Middle-earth never faced a foe as terrifying, as determined, as downright demented as those who hunt elves. 
strongman June wait John Peel John Peel Hollywood actress Ari teenager Rikazo and their T-74 tank have landed in a different world of elves and the spell to send them home has run amok and split into five pieces that appear as tattoos on the bodies of five young women elves so they set out on a quest to um let's just say disrobe every elf they can lay their hands on until they find the missing pieces man okay yeah that's definitely old Just a bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's very old. All right, and then the last one to release for June 2nd is Tokyo Ravens Complete Series Blu-ray Essentials. <laughs> so that is all the releases for, you know, the 25th on Monday, but heading in towards next month, those are all your DVD and Blu-ray releases for the 2nd of July. Yeah, the 2nd of July is next week. Woo! That much closer to the 4th. Almost. We already read those. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right. Hmm. So, there has been a lot of speculation as to whether or not Keanu Reeves is actually going to be in, um, is going to be in a Marvel, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Oh, uh, there are speculations about that. Or well, they're saying, oh, he's going to be a uh, Wolverine. He's going to be this person. He's going to be that person. He's going to be that person. Wasn't technically someone else supposed to play Wolverine besides him? I was, I'm trying to think. They see. haven't picked who's going to play Wolverine. Oh, not yet? No. Okay. I've they're, they're trying to pick a part that is suited for Keanu Reeves. I'm trying to think. With because every movie... Because they want him in the MCU. They want him. And they may have found one that could possibly... I was thinking maybe like a Spider-Man villain. But I just can't figure out... Um... No. I was thinking it maybe... may not be that. I was thinking maybe Vampira. I don't know. Vampiro? I don't know. Uh, let me think here. Oh, and also a uh, quick tidbit. It'll soon be July, and everyone's, I know, probably out there is a huge Disney nut in some way, shape, or form. The Lion King live action will be coming out, so let's hope Disney didn't screw this up. If they did, yeah. Screw what up? screw up the Lion King live action because um, they already messed up with Dumbo they screwed it up with Beauty and the Beast so let's hope they don't you know do this with the Lion King because this is everyone's classic childhood I I don't I don't want the TV episode <laughs> the third... they, they're they keeping this off of internet movie database oh Guardians of the Universe oh it's the Guardians Guardian of the Galaxy uh, I got the wrong thing, sorry. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Volume 3. Can't wait Hel for that. It helps if I spell, spell it, it right. right. Jinx. <laughs> and, yeah, they... They just give you the second one. But we know that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will happen. I'm so pumped for it. They already have the script for it. They have the director. They have the actors. But they don't have it on the yeah. database. <laughs> they don't have it on the database yet. Let me see if I can find it. Just mm -mm, Google it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Yep, there it is. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. All right. Well, 
we have a lot of news here. Um, but it won't come out until 2021. That's okay. That's so long. Well, not really. Like, technically, once this year is up. Oh, here it is. All right, so. They have a little bit of the cast. Um, Basically, all the people that were in the first they have make it come back. Well, these are people who have actually committed to the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's Palm, Chris Pratt, Elizabeth. Dave Batista. Dave Batista and Sean Gunn. Um, of course, it's listening to producers and all the other people the that were producing and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but what they're waiting on, I don't know why they're sitting on this, but they're waiting to see who's going to sign and commit. And who's going to keep their mouth shut? <laughs> because they have a terror. Um, there's some people in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, believe it or not, who has a bad habit of, you know, spilling everything. Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah, we got. I that. I didn't say that. I did not say that. But the thing is, he did kind of spoil it for Endgame, somewhat. Oh, oh we all, everybody dies. What? Wait, what? what? <laughs> He's no! like, oh. oh. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> you blew it. You blew it. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. But either way, he he did he did say in an interview with um I think it was um Benedict Cumber um Cumber that's the guy that plays Dr. Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch, yes. Oh, yes. So I had it right. Benedict Cumberbatch, um, in an interview, saying, like, no one won't give me the script for anything because I can't keep my mouth shut. So <laughs> it's totally understandable why they won't let him, you know, do anything else. So either way. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not. All right. They don't have anything movie wise. It's just titles. Yeah. Anyway, I know we know that. I know definitely that. Oh jeez. I definitely know that the next movie that's coming out is the Black Widow movie. And let's see. Time she got her own movie. After she died. I know. Yeah, you're gonna give her a, her own movie after she died. A prequel. That that. That makes no sense. Marvel movies. Phase four. In chronological order. You know what? I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> Well, they have all these movies. They have a list. I don't want to go to fandom, and I don't want to use Wikipedia. I want something that is definite. Well, we'll go to this one. This says Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yay! <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so phase four. It's going to have Black Widow, The Eternals, Doctor Strange 2, Black Panther Black 2, Panther 2 Shang-Chi, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So pumped for that. But they're yet to be announced. Basically, now. 
they're not saying whether or not there's going to be um because i know that people have come up with so many other different You know, films like I don't know, um, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Um, Let's see, Fantastic Four. Um, they had like at least two, two, mo two good movies. They had the. I'm talking about the original casting with the Fantastic Four, not the recent reboot that was probably back like in 20, 2016 or 2017. Oh, uh, the other Captain Marvel movie, and I think the Mighty Thor, uh, uh, another Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, those were the speculated movies. Yeah. But the actual movies, and this is on... Fandom. This is on Fandom. Cinematic Universe. Cin Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, the films that are to be announced. In other words, they're they're still you know their arrival date you know arrival date that's going to be released. Mm -hmm. um, that means that it's going to be announced. But you had for definite sure. We have Black Widow, The Eternals, Doctor Strange 2, Black Panther 2, Shang-Chi, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the other movies, uh, we know that Thor is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Because it was pretty clear... Um, when they let when they yeah. go, went to leave mm -hmm. that he was on their ship, ship so yeah. it makes sense <laughs> it makes sense that mm -hmm. he's going to be in guardians of the galaxy volume three okay so yeah it, it's obvious that thor has to be a part of guardians of the galaxy three so yeah it, ma it makes total sense so now, as far as black widow they have so many speculations as to who is going to be her nemesis? Yeah. So far that we know of, Black Widow has no women in uh, nemesis or enemies. <laughs> nemesis is. <laughs> well, they've been <clears throat> speculating. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do that. They speculate a lot. They speculate about everything. <laughs> um, but... They're filming in Russia. Ooh, cool. Let me see. And this, I'm going over the production notes. What they have done so far. Well, I think it, this is just little things about, um, It doesn't say anything about who her nemesis is going to be. Mm -hmm. So, but it does go over, you know, what film Scarlett Johansson has been in and oh, <laughs> that's nice. In February 2018, uh, Chris Evans stated that the film was confirmed in an interview. Oh, so by he, Captain America's lips. Wow. <laughs> From the lips of Captain America, it is confirmed. <laughs> so I guess I had no choice but to do that. Yep. So, um, on November 3rd, 2018... It was reported that filming would start in 2019, which is this year, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's already been started because photos have been leaked from the set. I, I, I myself have seen them. 
Yeah, you know, they're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Anybody can see them. Exactly. Uh, for a potential release next year. So most likely we'll be getting it in 2020. Yep. And that is Black Widow. That's a standalone prequel to, you know, all the Avenger films that she's been in. So basically Captain America, Iron Man. No, the first one she was in was in Iron Man. Oh, she was in Iron Man? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the first Iron Man, but... The second one? I believe it was the second yeah the second one he had to come up with a new element mm. okay since we're on the topic of the Marvel Cinematic Universe go for it I decided to pull up this is actually funny um, this is through AMC theaters where they have all of the Marvel movies in chronological order now, we all know that Iron Man was released in 2008. That was one of the first. That is not right. It's not? Because technically, I don't know if you ever watched Captain Marvel. I've not seen that movie yet. Then you don't know where he got the name of the Avengers from. Where... You know, Nick Fury got the name Avengers from. I know, I need to watch it. But he... <laughs> but for those of you who yeah. did, you know where he got the name Avengers from, and Captain America was, not really in a first way, Avenger. the first Avenger, but they didn't discover him until they... Later, until they got him out of the until, ice. Until they pulled Capsicle out of the ice. <laughs> Capsicle. <laughs> But this is basically what is updated from, like, a movie standpoint, not, like, from release dates, really. So, well, no, this is not talking about release dates. Yeah, it's watching each Marvel movie in chronological order. Even though we'll, we'll read the list and then we'll critique it later. Okay? Go for it. All right. So the first one that, if you are diehard Marvel fans like myself and Char are... Basically, Captain America, the first Avenger, is the first movie that you should watch. And it says, this is what it says. Captain America, the first Avenger, is something of an extent introducing to the MCU. The bulk of the movie is set in the 40s, and it introduces viewers to the SSR, which becomes S.H.I.E.L.D. Even the end credits signify, even the end credit sequence which features Nick Fury is a nice setup for everything that will follow. Want to watch the Marvel movies in order? Start here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we keep saying that, but we never do. I know. <laughs> but either way, okay, number two, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel officially takes the spot formerly held by Iron Man as the proper kickoff for the entire MCU. The story is permanently set in the mid-80s and features the first evolution of S.H.I.E.L.D. in an important stage of Nick Fury's career. The story also sets up the Creed, later seen in Guardians of the Galaxy, and more importantly, deals with an object that becomes significant towards the end of Marvel's Phase 1 as the origin story of Co yeah, Co yeah, Carol Devin Devins Danvers Bri Danvers <laughs> Danvers, Brie Larson who also feels more like a Phase 1 movie than any Marvel than anything Marvel has done in the past few years in terms of tone and theme, it sits well in the beginning of the viewing order. Yes, there's a connection to Infinity War and Endgame, but just keep this film's first post-credit sequence 
in your back pocket for later. So this is basically all of their... This You'll understand once you watch it. Yeah. Basically, it's what they're saying for Captain Marvel. Then number three, Iron Man. Throughout Iron Man, although Iron Man was the first MCU movie, it has more power than when placed here. We know how Howard Stark is thanks to the first Avenger watching his son take his first flandering steps into the bigger universe. It's a efficient stage of the MCU movie order. The final scene with Nick Fury stepping out of the shadows will take a sublimate difficult meaning after the events of Captain Marvel. Rather than hint at the birth of the MCU, it makes more connective tissue linking the first three films together. Because when you kind of make sense... Okay, so you watch Captain America first, which is set in the 40s. Then a couple decades later, you watch Captain Marvel. Then after that... Not literally. <laughs> well... <laughs> I think it figuratively. I think it kind of makes sense to kind of go that in order, despite the you know the years or whatever. I think it makes sense. Or maybe go Captain America, then Iron Man, then then Captain Marvel. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just putting my you know my two cents out there. Next, number four, Iron Man two. After Iron Man introduced viewers to the modern day interiorization of Shield. The sequel dives deeper into the organization. It also features Nick Fury in a far more significant role, allowing viewers to get a sense of just who this figure really is. Meanwhile, the focus on Howard Stark's legacy continues to draw the narrative threads together. It makes perfect sense to watch Iron Man 2 at this point. Number 5, The Incredible Hulk from 2008. This particular adjustment to the viewing order is appropriate. When the Incredible Hulk actually happens at the same time as Iron Man 2, the end credit sequence assumes Tony Stark now has a consolation role with S.H.I.E.L.D. Hmm. Consultation? Con Hold on. Yeah, it says consultation. No, no. Con... I don't know. <laughs> consulent? I don't know. Yeah, consulent. <laughs> yeah, my brain does not Go on. work today. Going on. <laughs> okay, number six, Thor. Thor introduced viewers to Asgard and launched a series of stories inspired by events in the realm in Tyria. At the same time, it continued to dive the... Develop the story of Shield with Consulent, Consul, with Consul, Coulson, and Hawkeye playing important parts. That is true. We did see Hawkeye and Thor. Yep. Number seven, the Avengers. This is a natural fit after the events of Thor, continuing many of the film's themes and character arcs. Loki returns as a villain. The concept of the Tesseract is explored. And the existence of dangerous aliens begin being of dangerous alien beings becomes public knowledge when the Chitori Chitori yeah, Chitori invade New York. There's also a few subtle details at this in the first film to really hint, hint that Shield isn't just good guys. The Avengers includes a disturbing sequence in which the World Security Council orders a nuclear attack on American soil. Hmm. Number eight. Thor the Dark World. Here's where the order of events really changes, but for good reason. The last two films have, explore, have explored the cosmic side of the MCU. And it makes sense to continue the line. Some of the most important themes and ideas, particularly the relationship between Loki and Thor, follow on perfectly from the Avengers. This also introduces the idea of the Infinity Stones, 
although they're only partly explained at this point. Guardians of the Galaxy is next after Thor The Dark World. Continuing the cosmic focus, Guardians of the Galaxy unveils another Infinity Stone, the Collector, introduced in the stinger of Thor The Dark World, makes another appearance, trying the two, tying the two films together. Viewers are left with a strong sense that the Infinity Stones are being brought into play across the universe. Next is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. The events of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 are set only a couple months after the first film, so it makes sense for this to follow straight on. He continues the space opera style and tone established by the last two films in our Marvel movie order. Iron Man 3. The cosmic di diversion is over, and the focus now moves back to Earth, where Tony Stark is dealing with an emotional fallout from the Avengers. The passage of time between the films actually makes Tony's PSTD feel more significant while also making also making it feel more natural than Stark has had the time to build so many so many armors. That makes no sense. Should say so much armor. Whoever did that sucks at typing. Captain America the Winter Soldier is number twelve. Continuing with the earthly forces, this movie shows that Captain America is up to his, that is up to, this story could even, could even be happening at the same time as Iron Man 3. Explaining why Cap doesn't help Tony against the Mandarin and why. Mandarin? Like a Mandarin orange. Yeah, Mandarin. <laughs> why though? <laughs> And why Stark isn't on hand to deal with Hydra. Or maybe Cap and Stark are merely still wearing of one another at this stage. Perhaps most importantly, placing this film here begins as Falcon's arc that will run through the next few movies. And I'm no longer reading descriptions anymore. I'm just going to read the titles and the numbers. Because <laughs> we kind of all get it now. <laughs> if you want to learn more, go to... Basically, just type in uh, Marvel Movies in Chronological Order 2019 and look for amctheaters.com slash amcscene slash the best way to, wa to rewatch the MCU. Basically, just go on that site. Number 13, Avengers Age of Ultron. 14, Ant-Man. 15, Captain America Civil War. 16, Black Panther. 17, Spider-Man Homecoming. 18, Doctor Strange. 19, Thor Ragnarok. Okay, yeah, Doc, watching Doctor Strange after Thor Ragnarok makes sense. Then, 20, Ant-Man and the Wasp. 21, Avengers Infinity War. And then 22, Endgame. And then Spider-Man Far From Home is 22. So that is... All of the updated Marvel movies in chronological order. Until Black Widow comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you watch Spider-Man Far From Home, it could possibly lead up to Black Widow. But again, we don't know. Until we've seen the movie. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, because, I mean... Um... Spider-Man Far From Home is a technic technically a Marvel movie. But even though Spider-Man is even though it is even though he Sony? is Sony. Yeah. And I think so isn't um the guy the villain. Uh I can't remember his name. Mysterio? Yeah, Mysterio. I think he's I thought he was a... Wait, is he? Wait, yeah, he is a villain. I was about to say, like, wait, isn't he a hero? No, no, he's a villain. In the Spider-Man. He starts out as a hero, but then he turns to a villain. Ah. So... All right. <laughs> now... Let me think here. 
We might as well just play the Jeopardy theme song. Do do do. <laughs> Wait no. <laughs> yeah, just start playing. I am thinking <laughs> here. Okay, speaking of Spider-Man, when are they gonna come out with a like besides Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man Far From Home? When are they gonna come out like with actual like live action for like Miles Morales becoming Spider-Man and then showing Gwen Stacy being Spider-Man? Well, Spider Gwen actually. They Spider they do want to do uh, a, a live action into the Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. But oh, a lot of comments coming in. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Otomo, this. Okay. I'm not even going to read this person's name. Are <laughs> as a pine plank, I am bored upon ye ship, scallywags. Sail <laughs> <laughs> the seven seas of mortality on Twitch TV, where I have betrothed a follow upon thee. <laughs> May God bless ye travel your travels of these transforming seas of Twitch TV. Peace. Peace. <laughs> why did you say that? I don't know why you said that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Discord, where we call. I don't get that. <laughs> but thank you for commenting either way. <laughs> and thank you for following us on Twitch TV. So thanks. Oh, maybe it's because... Oh, okay. We're on here. <laughs> oh, but next week, yes, we will be having a new battle royale mm -hmm. featuring Black Lagoon, which more than likely will be will have the main character who Let likes to, to shoot her gun first, then ask, ask questions. questions later. And then we'll also have her go up against the <laughs> peacekeeping arms dealer, uh, Coco Hekmatyar. Yep. And if anybody has watched either one of these shows, you know. It's about to be messy. It's going to get messy real quick. It's going to get ugly. <laughs> um, Black Lagoon. It's set in a town where I don't think they, they can shoot each other. Well, isn't it basically... Okay, so basically it kind of starts out with a guy that basically has a desk job. And has to run something for his boss, but then gets kidnapped by a bunch of like supposed yes. pirates. And yeah, that's the Black Lagoon is. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's more like a battlefront type thing on the water. Like they, it's kind of like you know shoot at each other with guns or whatever. But either way, I'm not upset by it. I enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> But uh, I think this is going to be a really good matchup. I'm hoping. And Shar's kicking chips under her desk. <laughs> yes. I don't know. So why we Revy have them here. is the one that shoots her gun first and then asks questions, questions later. later. And then the other show, Your Man Gone. Mm -hmm. Your Man is Gone. <laughs> I spelled it wrong, but the computer helped me out with that. Spell check. Uh, Your Man Gone. The two main characters is the arms dealer, Coco Hekmatyar, and one of her new bodyguards that she got at the beginning of the show. Jonathan. Jonathan Marr. And he is a child soldier. Man. 
Childhood is rough. So, but she also has a lot of other bodyguards. Um, some of them are ex-U.S. military. Some of them are ex-Japanese military. Some of them are from the Italian military. Man. A lot of military. Yeah, talk about international flavor. Uh, you so know, they dirty. know they know how to battle, mm. and they know how to shoot. Uh, they know their guns. They are excellent snipers, and they just. It's my favorite. It's one of my favorite shows. Black Lagoon is also one of my favorite shows because in the mo I think in the movie that they had the guy that they kidnapped he comes up with a plan for them. <laughs> wow. And th they're not they're less enthused about it because they are going by his plan. Mm. So, I'm willing to bet I'll get through Jormungan pretty quickly, no problem. Um, hopefully, I'll get eight next week <laughs> and i'm gonna go out and buy me some anime that was my plan this past paycheck but eh, stuff happens true life does happen um but we can possibly look up those right now let's see I look up the list with her, so that'd be fun. So you said top ten strongest? Yes. Uh, well, I'll look up the top ten strongest uh, Black Lagoon characters. Sorry if we're silent here. Yeah, we're just... We're just looking up. Doing our research. Doing our research. And we're going to give you live right now. And I don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. I don't care about images. Uh, da, 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 da. I all I have is the top ten dark black lagoon characters. They didn't give me like a strongest one, but that's what I keep getting. I don't get any strongest one. And I don't get that. Mm -mm. I see a YouTube video about it. Um, top 10 uh, strongest Black Lagoon characters. But I'm not going to bother with it. Mm -mm. What did it say at the top? What did it say? Top 10 strong... Oh, no. It said something. <sighs> What um, 
<laughs> the 15 most impressive physiques in anime. <laughs> Of course, All Might would be number one. All Might is number one. With 1,272 votes. And then at number two, of course, is Alex Luis Armstrong. <laughs> and it's weird that almost his whole family is, like, ripped. Well, except for... His uh, sister. Except for his sisters. Yeah. She's normal. Well, no, he has one sister that's ripped that looks exactly like him. Yeah, just which is ill. creepy. Uh, oh. Gort, Master man. Roshi. Yep, the old man from Dragon Ball. Yep, he can get ripped. Mm -hmm. In two seconds. This is the chick I was telling you about. Sophie. Sophia Velmer. Vel Sophia yeah. Velmer from Jormungand. Oh, yeah. She is buff. Well... Anime does have its fair share of ripped women, so. Yep. And weird. then we have Shinya Kogami. From Psycho Pass. Yep. And then Ira Gamori. Oh, Ira, yeah. And it's funny because this is. Kill a Kill is said around a school where they all have to wear the same uniforms and then they have they get stars and they get powers and all that and yet i'm thinking like how is that dude in mi in high school seriously he looks like he could be a grown man with a job <laughs> oh there we go jonathan, jonathan joe star i'm i'm surprised he's not all the joe what? I'm surprised that all the Joe stars are not on this list. Surprisingly. All of them. Look, this is what it says. <laughs> in the, in the early days of JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventures, Adventures, most of the characters were unnaturally beefy. Beefy. Yeah. <laughs> How much beef do you want on your Joe star book? Where's the beef? <laughs> right there. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, but in more recent seasons, they are no longer, no longer look like they could easily lift up a pickup truck over their heads. But they're still pretty muscular. One of the most built characters is Jonathan Joestar from season one, who is so powerful that he can barely tear through solid steel. You can actually well, tear through solid I mean, steel. If if you watch Diamond is Unbreakable, um, I don't want to say Joe Tarot because he's buff. Um, um, Joseph? Joe Star? No. Um, Joe Skay? Joe Skay, yeah. <laughs> he's not buff. Of course he's not. He probably doesn't work well, you know. I mean, he does. he's muscular, but he's not ripped buff. like his grandfather well technically great great grandfather makoto tachibana from, from free. free man that's fan service all those guys in free are ripped and all they do is swim <laughs> about all they wear is speedos too well no no the, well i think one of the guys from free wears the speedos the other guys wear like you know specialized like swim shorts yeah. Oh, those longer... The longer swim shorts. Yeah. Okay. A from, A Naruto? from Naruto. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's old man. What can I say? <laughs> well, most old men in anime are ripped. I'm surprised... I, I, I don't go gaga over Master Roshi. Come on. <laughs> I w it wouldn't surprise me if old man Yamamoto from Bleach is on this list. I want to oh, see if he's on this list. Oh, let's see. The Armored Titan from Attack on Titan. That makes no sense. That was the... It's a Titan. Of course he's going to be ripped. Yeah, duh. Uh, Shakura Ogami from... Yeah, that show. Dang, roll, napen. 
I think. <laughs> I have no idea the what that is. Gangron Ba. Uh, <sighs> Basically about... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. I can't pronounce that name. I'm not going to try anymore. Oh, okay. Kotaro Amon from Tokyo Ghoul. Abs. <laughs> uh, and the arms. I mean, come on. But abs. And the chest. <laughs> but yeah, the abs. Abs. <laughs> uh, what the heck? That's not buff. That's a face. <laughs> that's freaky. It's like he's got a masculine looking butt. Yojiro time. Hanma from Baki the Grappler. Baki the Grappler. It looks like that, that, that's an old anime and that, they, that does look creepy. And they revised it on, on uh, Netflix, but they just Ooh. called it Baki. That looks like a, a mask. Holds the title of World's Strongest Grappler. He fought both American and. Viet Cong forces with his bare hands during the Vietnam War and has mastered every form of un unarmed combat. His body does not make anything resembling anatomical sense. Y'all tell me that. Since he, Since appears, he appears to have both a demon face muscle and a six pack on his back. Ew. Ew. Okay, next. What? Jet, Jet Black. Black from Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop. Bebop. He's got a robot arm and one good muzzle. <laughs> Still, how does that count? I, like, I love the show. Don't get me wrong, but Jet Black, come on. He's only got one. Well, well, no, he, I wouldn't say he has one good arm, but still, <sighs> he's, he's got okay. a robot arm, but either way. Okay. Ah, I knew it! Remember, we just saw that title earlier, I told Toichiro you! Toichiro Izumida from... Yoamashi Pedal, I told you! I'm thinking like, hmm, it's revolved something around a bicycle, and I was right on the money! Look at his leg! Hey, when you're pedaling a bike for a long period of time, you gotta have leg muscles. You can't skip leg day. <laughs> <laughs> In his case, he can't. <laughs> he can't skip leg day. Oh my gosh. And that's Never it. skip leg day. Ever. <laughs> oh, let's see. Ooh, let's do the most jacked women of all time. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Since basically we have women. <clears> since now we did right the now. most jacked men. Yeah. Now we're going to do the most jacked women in anime. I think we already did this. Number one. Matrona from the Seven Deadly Sins. Well, of course she is. She's a giant. Shh. Abs. Abs. Arms. arms. Oh, yeah, Mikasa from Attack on Titan. Yeah, she's got abs. Is that all she does all day is sit-ups? I do not know. She's the quiet one, and those are the ones you have to look out for. She's number three, too? Why was she on the... Well, she technically... Sophia Velmer from Jormungan. She was on two list. Uh, she's also known as Valmet. Valmet. Okay. That's her code name, actually. Hmm. Valmet. Michelle K. Davis from Terra Formars. Arms, abs, and legs. Wow. Yukina from Caberni of the Iron Fortress. Wow. Yeah, she's a little bit buff. But she's got the face of, like, someone that's going to high school. Eh. Anime is a weird thing. <sighs> Kale. The Dragon Ball universe. <sighs> they had to have a Super Saiyan female. 
Yep. Okay. Sakura Ogami. Again? Wait, that was a woman? I guess. I can't anymore. <laughs> Go on to the next one. <laughs> Yuko Oshima from Keijo. Good grief. Look at the arms. Yeah, no guy wants to date a woman with biceps as big as his. And oh crap. Nikuma, the quasar of stigmata. Stig stigmata, yeah. Nicknamed the Daily Cow the Dairy Cow? What? Well, uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, I think we know why. Okay. Next. <laughs> While we got at least five more minutes, we'll just run through this list. Okay. And we have Tanya from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Good grief, she's buff. Yeah, one of the spin-offs of the classic Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Asia Clan Clan from Outlaw Star. I'm surprised it wasn't uh, Asia Can Can. <laughs> no, that's her name, Asia Clan Clan. Funny. <laughs> she is a Kataro Kataro. Okay. You have to watch this show in order to understand. She can change into, I believe. A dog? No. A cat? I want to say it's some kind of cat, but it's a big cat. I think she's a tiger. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. Zorin Blitz from Helsing. That is clearly not a woman. That, uh, that is a woman. I don't know anymore. You, di you didn't watch it. I know. <laughs> but still, the physique, <sighs> though, in her face. Uh, uh, you can tell. Come on. Yeah, I can tell, you know, like in the middle section, but literally her face. That's not feminine at all. <laughs> Looks like a cross between Ichigo and then the lady that's posted on here. Good gravy! <laughs> oh my goodness! <sighs> okay, on to the next. Oh, good grief! Now that's clearly Sandra a man. Sandra guts from Dirty Pear. <laughs> that's clearly a dude. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> clearly a man. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Okay, let's keep going through this list. Miss Monday from One Piece. I have seen that, and that truly is a woman. It's just weird <laughs> that she's so ripped. <laughs> she's got somebody pinned. That's Zoro. She f I hope she's fighting him. She is. Okay. <laughs> she is. And that was the earlier style of animation for One Piece. Now it's just more, you know, clean and detailed. Sakai Uno from Magical Girl Or. Yeah. Mm, yeah. A girl it's a that's little a, bit, a little bit ripped. Yeah. To a beefy adult man. <laughs> it's not as bad as the other ones. True. It was not bad as the other ones. And that's okay, it. that's it for that. All right, we are down to wow, two minutes, close to a minute. That's All right. Crazy. Um, how about anime characters who are morally ambiguous, or thirteen characters who died too soon? Yes, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. This is 13 characters who died too soon. And I'll read them, because you read the last two. Okay. 
Okay. Shiro Fujimoto. Blue Exorcist. Fuji. That's Fujimoto. Fuji. <laughs> Fujimoto. Sorry, I'm, pronoun I'm pronouncing each weird syllable the wrong way. He did die too soon. He did die too soon. It's sad, though. He was the adopted father of both Ren and his brother. He did die too soon. Ah, uh, Kauri, he's a no. You're lying, April. Yes, she died too soon, too. <laughs> oh, God, I'm gonna get emotional now. Next, go next. <laughs> L. Auschwitz, Death Note. Yeah, he died soon. He died pretty too soon, too. Kamina! Ah, why? Ah! <laughs> uh, Kamina! <laughs> Seven Tapa Gurin Lagan! Oh, yes, Kamina! Man, that one hit hard. Oh, man, that spoiled it for me. He dies! She's a. She's. Shusei! Shusei Kagura! He dies in Psycho Pass. For all you people that watch it or have not watched it. <laughs> Well, it spoiled it for me. Mami Tome Perlo Magica Madoka Magica. Yeah, she died too soon, too. It was awful. Marco Bolt. Bolto. I think I said that right. Yeah, he died too soon, too. An attack on Titan. Biscuit oh, Griffin. Oh, yeah. Movo Sugatum Blot. Iron blooded orphans. He sacrificed himself in order to save the others. Aw, what a good friend. <sighs> Moving on. So he could save his sisters, too. Hilda, Outlaw Star. She sacrificed herself so they could get away with the ship. That they stole from the pirates and the space forces. Mm. Kaoru Nagisa from Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, why do they have to die with smiles on their faces? That makes it even more tragic. Because he was an angel. Oh. It was either kill him or Shinji dies. Uh. Well, no. It was either kill him or everybody on Earth dies. Wow. And it's funny because they added um, Neo Evangelion on Netflix not too long ago. So now I have an excuse to watch it. Don't watch it. Why? <laughs> because it's not the same. Caesar... Antonio Zeppeli, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. I'm not even that far yet, and that just spoiled it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the second season where they actually meet this guy. I'm not even that far yet. And, I, and then he dies? Well, at least I don't know how he dies, and don't you dare read it. <laughs> don't you dare read it. I'm not. I already know. I mean, I've watched it. Mao from Code Geass. Yeah. He was a minor villain who kidnapped Nanali. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. Anyway. Kario. Ma. Yeah. Mado. Mado. Tokyo Ghoul. I haven't really watched Tokyo Ghoul, so... I, I, I watched watch it, it but... Oh, him! Him! He was the... One of the, um... Creepy old man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he was the one that was trying to catch the ghouls. Oh. Uh, why? <laughs> um... Let me see. Even though Kyria, even though Mato is t uh, technically a villain, his presence on the series Tokyo Ghoul is still missed by fans. 
Motto is a first class investigator of the commission of uh, counter ghoul and a sick psychotic one at that. <laughs> this dude actually has a child. Oh, man. Oh, man. Still, he has his reasons. His wife was killed by the one eyed owl and he has been seeking vengeance ever since experienced and ruthless motto serves as katoro amon's mentor and partner huh, he was mentioned in the uh, physique one motto is obsessed with I have no idea what that word is. Quen queers? Or Quen quars? I don't know. Weapons. Quen quests? Weapons made for ghost. So. Kagoon. Ghost Kagoon. Which ends up being his ultimate, ultimate demise in season one. Hmm. While fighting Toka and Hinami, Mato f gloats about his few get. Oh, God, why do they have to use these dudes? Uh, to Kagun that and becomes distracted. This is just enough time for Hinami to kill Madu. He uses his last breath to talk about how he must continue his life calling of killing ghouls. What a waste of final words. <laughs> Truly is. So that was the the 13 anime characters that died too soon. So, and it is 5.06, and we are out of time. Well, we were out of time <laughs> six minutes ago, <laughs> but either way. Truly, we were. Yeah. <laughs> but we were. <laughs> yeah, we, we kept on reading that to exactly, you. Exactly, we kept reading it anyway, because we wanted to complete the list either way. So we thank all of you guys for watching Apocalypse Otaku live here on Twitch. And but, tuning in. Yep, and tuning in. And also, if you did not catch us while we were here live, we will be posting this very show that we are doing right now on our YouTube page, entitled by the same name. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell when we post our latest videos of our shows. And also make sure you go on Nemo and search for also the Nemo brand that we made, which is also by the same name. Apocalypse Otaku. Exactly. So you can literally catch us on three things. Our Nemo, our YouTube, and also on Twitch. So we will see you guys all for next week as we round up our participants for our Black Lagoon versus Jormungand. Woo. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I have to be critiqued by uh, her when I say the name. So I'm being like... Well, I have to be critiqued by you when I say the name wrong. And I critique you when you pronounce Boruto and Naruto wrong. You do it to I get me annoyed. I just said that. <laughs> you do it I, just to get me annoyed. That's what you do it for. Yes, I do. Yeah. But, <laughs> but either way, guys, we thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys catch us next Thursday. Same, same time, time same, same channel. Place. Yep. We don't move. Ever. <laughs> yeah, we stay here and hide under the tables <laughs> until Thursday. Until now, we are yep. moving. Okay. Next week, we will see you on Thursday. Exactly. Same time, same channel. Not Peace. moving anywhere. Bye, guys.